Hello, I want to talk to you about three different perspectives in ServiceNow today. The first one I talk to you about is on the left, and that's the student experience. And we're talking about a student that's going through the admissions process today, so a prospective student actually. On the right is going to be the ServiceNow agent that works in the admissions department. And in this case, this is going to be a user called Edward Hack that we're using for our demonstration. And then I'm going to give you a third perspective, which is going to be from the ServiceNow administrator's point of view. So we're going to look at a couple of the different analytics dashboards. And we're also going to go ahead and take a look at what we can do for knowledge, how knowledge is managed. When we start with the student on the left-hand side, what we can go ahead and do is I'll go to a general inquiries, and usually in ServiceNow, for this type of interaction, you're jumping into a, a form, but we can also do the, the entire page. So you can have a support landing page if you wanted to as well. But in this case, we're using the content that was already there in the case of UCLA, and then just jumping into general inquiries where it brings you into a, a ServiceNow form. There's a few things on this form I want to explain, and they don't all have to be located on the form. For example, on the bottom right, that's our chatbot. That chatbot could be on the previous page. You can actually embed it into your own pages. So that's a way to get support. There is also up here, there's knowledge. So you can search for knowledge. There's an optional com communities configuration as well. And what you can do in communities is let, you can either do a moderated or unmoderated community, and you can let people put information on that community so that they can share that information. And in the communities articles as well, you'll be able to look on there and see what other students wrote and, uh, and also score it. So that's an optional feature of ServiceNow that comes with a license for customer service management. Uh, you can also go and access the knowledge bases. So there could be one or more knowledge bases. In this case, I have an admissions knowledge base. And you could search for information in those knowledge bases directly. I'm going to show you a few more things about the knowledge articles and how we manage that as well. All right, so if we go back on the page, what you did see here is that this is a, a form that we can use to go ahead and manage an admissions case. I can put as many fields here as I want. I could have select boxes, make them mandatory or not mandatory. And that's one way from a web page to get a case into the system. Uh, another way to get a case into the system is to send an email. I can email directly to the ServiceNow account, and it'll take and create a case for that student, and it will attach that case to the email that it was sent from. And the correspondence can go back and forth over emails, but that will all be logged in ServiceNow. All right, you can also have logins if we need to at some point. It might be worth it to have when a student gets accepted it may be worth it to create a login for that student, even before they have their own login, in this case at UCLA. Okay. Another way is I'm going to look at the chatbot a little bit. In chatbot, you can have pre-programmed conversations in here that the student would want to navigate through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I could put in information here. We have a natural language understanding. So if I put in there, you know, help with admissions, it would be able to say, would be able to figure out what I meant from that conversation and pick a topic. Right? So there is a natural language understanding component to the chatbot that does come with customer service management. The other thing you do is just pick from a list. I want to run a certain conversation. In this case, I'm a prospective student and I need to get help from admissions. So I can click on the admissions and then what it'll do is it'll say briefly describe your issue. So if I can say I'm um, a uh, uh, freshman questions and what it'll do is now it's going to look up and see if I can find an answer for that as the virtual agent and it did it said hey we, we found this guide this freshman admission guide and now as the student I can go click on that freshman admission guide and it will bring me to that article so the articles that are put in are automatically indexed and now I can go ahead and read that freshman admission guide and see if it has what I need in there. There's also, when you do, I'm going to talk to you about the configuration of knowledge, but you can also go ahead and say whether this was helpful or not. And you can see here that there is also a, a rating on this article. So I can give it a social rating. And these you can turn on or off. You can also add comments to the bottom of the case. So if I had some comments, 
as that student, I'd be able to add those comments in or have a conversation about this form. So that's a little bit about the knowledge from the student perspective, and you can post as much of that knowledge as you want to. So this is a knowledge article. It gets versioned. There's a process for managing and curating the content that goes into our knowledge articles, which I will discuss later in the admin section. But the other thing we could have done here is I might have had that same type of conversation, get help from admissions, and I might type in the same thing, uh, freshman enrollment, and put that in there, and it would do the search, and I could look through those articles, and I already checked that out, and no, that, that really wasn't helpful. So if I say no, it will give me a few options. I can search again using a different topic, or this virtual agent conversation will actually let me contact an agent. Now, my agent on the right-hand side here, this is Edward Hack. In order to be available, what Edward has to do is click on Available and say, what type of interactions is Edward Hack open for business for? In this case, it's a case that's coming for our, from our form that we looked at earlier, um, or chat conversations. So because he's marked as available for both of those, he's basically in the queue waiting for something to come into his inbox. Now, if I say Contact an Agent, What's going to happen here, it's going to create an interaction. And then that interaction will be, in this case, because Edward is marked as available, he does have an interaction came in. And this is an anonymous student, so there is no login at this point. So they came in as a guest user. So from here, I can go ahead and accept that chat conversation. And I can start having a conversation back and forth with that student. So basically, this brings me into a regular chat mode. And if, if you'll notice here, these, this creates a record here, so I could have multiple chats going on at the same time that I'm working on. So in this one, I would you know, send a chat back and forth, and I could, that would go back to the student, and the student would say, uh, right? And all of this is logged in a, a journal record that we're keeping over here. You can see the back and forth. But at some time, this may become a point where I can't answer this over the phone. So what I might want to do now as Edward is I might want to say, okay, I've had a conversation on chat, but I need to get help from somebody else. So what I can do is I can create a case, and that case will say, um, I can say this is an admissions case. You can even have separation here. So if you want to do international students versus, versus uh, local students versus freshmen or, you know, postgraduate students, you could have all these different cues for those different cases. In this case, I'm going to move it over to an admissions case, and I'm going to go ahead and say create a case. Now, because I need to get extra help, I can even go further here and ask the student to go ahead and give me some more information about this case. For example, I could say, if I wanted to, I can go ahead and add some details about the student. So I can create a contact record in here or if the student already has a record in here, I could put the student's name in there so that we can contact them over email. I'd also be able to say, where am I going to assign this to? So I could pick a different assignment group. And because I need help with this, I need to send it to a different team. And then even within that team, I would be able to assign it to somebody on the team if I wanted to from here. Now, additionally, what happens here is I create this, this description. And I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Create a description here. So this is another opportunity for uh, for the agent, right? So when I save this case, it's creating a new admissions case. And what it will do on the right hand side is it will actually, because I have on agent assist here, it will it will look up the article for this user that called in, and I have their email address. And what I can do here is I would be able to go ahead and attach this. So if I wanted to, if I say this, this is a good article to send back, what I can do is I can attach this to the case. And what that'll do is um, attaching the guide. That'll put it in the case notes, which will automatically trigger an email that goes back to that person that originated the call. So, so now I have a back and forth email with that student because I took our chat conversation to the next level. Now, what could happen after that is we might go back and forth. So I had an interaction that's, that's attached to the case. 
So I can see all of that information from this interaction and call it back at any time. And this way, you could even have the person that we pass the case to, they can look up that interaction. And any emails, any subsequent emails that come back from the student would be logged in the email folder. Right? So the case holds everything for what's going on with that for the entire life cycle of getting the right help to this student. The other thing I can do in the case is I'm going to go back to the case details. Uh, we talked about forwarding. I could go ahead and close it from here too. So in order to close the case, it's going to want specific things for me. So I'm going to say, what, what did we do to close it? I'll have it marked and that'll help us in our analytics later. And then who is it closed by? It's going to put me in there automatically. Now, besides working these queues and sitting on the queues like we're talking about, I can always go back to my home page too if I'm not logged in, and I could say, oh wow, my team has 19 cases, and I could pull up my team's cases, and I might just start pulling from this queue. And so this one, this freshman admissions one here, I want to start working that case so I can open it up. I can look at the details of the case, and I could say, if I wanted to, um, this one's already assigned to me, so let's go back and get another one. If I pick up this, uh, this emails are not delivered one, yeah, so here, because it's not assigned to anybody, it's assigned to Emily, it's not assigned to me. I could say assign this to me, and I could take ownership over of that case. Everything is logged from an audit perspective. So here you'll see that there were some, the system administrator made some comments. If I make some comments on this case, now that I own it, and post the comments, it'll you'll see here that that's my interaction. So you'll see all the ha different interactions that happen for the length of the case. It's a, real, a lot of really nice things in there that the agent can do. And like I said, jumping back and forth, he could work the chat, he could work the case, he could have multiple cases open across the top of their screen. And whenever he comes back to this screen, a lot of times what happens with agents is they'll have you know, 10 or 15 browser windows open. What's nice about the agent workspace is from one window, they can see all of their inbound requests and they can work multiple tickets at the same time from multiple channels that are coming in from students. And so the last perspective I want to talk to you a little bit about is going to be one of an administrator on the ServiceNow side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look, and this is this is the ServiceNow dashboard that administrators will use. So just a really quick tour of what it is. On the left-hand side are all the applications that are available to you. And there's a favorites folder that I'm on now. But this is a general folder that will show me everything that's available to me as an administrator. I have a lot here. So if I wanted to look up knowledge, I can go here and I could look up my knowledge base. And that would show me that I have an entire uh, knowledge application, right? which is right here. Because I use knowledge all the time, I can also go ahead and put a favorite on it. And then what happens is when I go to my favorites folder, you'll see that I have knowledge that's on the bottom here. So this is the entire knowledge applications. Let's you import port articles. Um, you can create new articles and do all different types of things on the, those uh, articles. So you can have groups, who has permissions to view certain articles and who doesn't. The other thing I can do is I can look at my knowledge base here. So I created a knowledge base for this demonstration called admissions. And that admissions knowledge base has one article in it. It has actually one category called freshman, and in the freshman category is the freshman admission guide. If I wanted to create a new article, I can create an article here, and it would let me go ahead and write the information into the article, or I could cut and paste it. If you have, like what I did for the freshman admin, admin one, is I, for the guide, I just pasted your HTML that was on the UCLA website. Okay, and then from here, it would go into a draft, and it would be promoted. And what it, it has a whole review process where we're looking at how many times that article was accessed, who accessed it, and we're creating search rankings based on, on the access and on the ratings of those articles. So there's a lot that goes into the knowledge management function, and that's just a little tip of the iceberg. A lot of people start by importing a bunch of Word documents or PDFs that they have, or straight HTML, which some mm -hmm. sites have as well. All right, just finishing up here on the last few things, there's a lot of analytics. So I'm going to give you a taste of a few dashboards. This dashboard here is called Advanced Work Assignment. 
So what this will do is it'll tell you all the agents you have available, and it'll tell you what those available agents are able to do. So in this case, the agents are able to resolve cases, and they're also available for chat. So right now, one of my agents is available, and that's the age, that's the one we logged in with before, right? So that's Edward Hack is available, and you can see Edward Hack's available for chat and receiving new cases that come in, either through email or through the web page. I can also go to my collaboration dashboard, and this is this is looking specifically at managing virtual conversations uh, for the chatbot. So here I would be able to go in and look at all the conversations that they're having um, over time through that chatbot dashboard. Right, so if I have a bunch of different types of conversations, I can see what they're doing. Um, I can see the different users coming in. I can even do the, the ranking on my natural language understanding. So certain phrases that are working to get people to the right place or not. So the, the constant analysis can be done on this data to make your search better and better and your virtual agent experience better and better. There's a customer service overview, and this is just a listing of all of the different uh, cases that are going on. So I can say cases that are in progress, cases that are paused, right? Cases that are, have been canceled. And anything, any one of these charts that you see, uh, mm -hmm. priority, if there's a priority on the cases, but any one of these charts that you see are interactive, which means if I just wanna see what are those cases? There's 53 pause cases. I can click on the 53, and what that'll do is bring me into the actual case records. So I can just look at these cases any way I want to. On these views, I can rearrange the cases any way I want to, so I can add different columns. I can say, how long has this been paused, maybe, because I'm looking at the pause time. And uh, on here, I could even create a favorite if I want to come back to this. I can create a favorite, and I could say, go ahead and... Uh, so paused, I'll say paused cases. And now I created, when I create that favorite, I, I have this built-in filter and I can go to my paused cases. So if I come back to my self-service, my knowledge base information I showed you earlier, I can just jump back to that pre-created list that I have here. All right, so there's a lot more I can show you, but I wanted to get it all in 15 minutes. I thank you for your time and you know where we are if there's any more questions. Thank you.